Ultimately, we are all drawn here to unravel what lies beneath Oressa. Hello, welcome to Switched On Gaming, Paul speaking. And today we're looking at a new Nintendo Switch release and that is Beneath Oressa. Uh, this game's been out a little while on PC and uh, it's come to the Nintendo Switch. It was released on the 12th of September along with a wealth of other games. If you've seen my sort of comeback video, you would have seen me talking about a load of games that came out on the 12th of September. This is one of those. Um, this comes from, uh, who published this? This comes from Goblins Studio. So they put out a lot of little indie games, quite interesting the games that they put out. I'll be looking at some more of their games, but um, yeah, quite an interesting little indie publisher. Uh, so yeah, Beneath Aressa, this is a deck building card game. Just going to take you through a little bit of gameplay and uh, just chat about it. Um, I'll give you some thoughts as we go along. So we start off here. Um, there's very little in the way of story or tutorials. There really is. There's kind of a written tutorial on the homepage of how to play. And it's sort of um, just text-based, six steps, not a lot of stuff. Really is chucking you in and seeing how it goes. So you start off here uh, on the Agora and you pick one of these expeditions. Now I think these are randomized, but basically these give you different buffs and debuffs to your runs. So you can see on the right hand side there, these different um, expeditions. Skulls are the difficulty levels, so these are all level one at the moment. And then as you go through and complete the game and uh, unlock more expeditions, you get higher difficulty levels. So you can see here the, the sort of um, buffs and debuffs. So if I take this one, the apprentice of the Medicum, gain 10 max health P, but lose 10 HP. So you start with 10 less. Uh, this one, followers of Dira, remove one random non-hero card from the base deck, and so on and so on. So you just pick one of these expeditions to take. Uh, I think we will take this one. So on each floor, each floor one combat, gain two shield. And it's good to get a starting bit of shield. If you're used to playing Slay the Spire, then you know sort of defense is absolute king in these games. So we'll go with a little bit of defense. There's characters to unlock as you go along here and complete. Again, you know, as you can complete through the game, uh, there's only one character unlocked at the start, Sora. Uh, what I really liked about this, and from what I've seen of other gameplay, is that each character has its own sort of unique way of creating specials. So, for example, Sora here has got the Cobalt Curse. Um, and you get these virus cards, and it's confused the heck out of me at the start, but I'll sort of explain what they are as we go along. But basically, she can introduce virus cards into her deck, and that fills up a bar, uh, and then at certain points in that bar, she gets uh, increased abilities. But also, those virus cards can affect your health, so the more you put in your deck, the more chance you've got of drawing them into your hand, and the more chance of them doing your damage. So it's a really, really nice risk and reward system. So I like that a lot. But as I say, due to the lack of tutorials, it really threw me at first. And I say, we'll talk about that a little bit more. On top of that, you can also unlock uh, companions. This is a really nice mechanic as well, on top of the sort of Slay the Spire mechanic. So again, uh, what we've got here, five, six, seven, eight, nine to unlock. You can see top right. Um, and again, sorry to keep repeating this, but if really confusing what all this meant it doesn't get explained to you at all but as you go through the game you can level up your companionship with your companion and at each one of those levels at the top right there as you go through and and sort of add companion levels to your companionship um you unlock new features so you know first level of companion um, level there will give you uh, one of three combat bot cards um, actually, it's, that's all of the, that companion special. So each level that you unlock, you'll get an extra card to put in your deck. Um, I've seen as well other companions have got all different sorts of um, buffs and, and stuff as you level up your companionship. But this one for a starter companion is pretty basic. So after all that, and as I say, there's no kind of story really. There's no kind of tutorial. So you, you kind of chucked in and really have to figure things out for yourself. So there's three floors that you have to fight through. Uh, randomized, so procedurally generated levels, and you kind of run between levels in this animation, sort of loading each level in, which I don't mind. I know some people have complained about that, that it slows the game down a bit. So 
My first real complaint is if you look at the bottom of the screen, that's kind of your map. Now, if you've played Slay the Spire, you've seen something similar, although there are branching paths on Slay the Spire, and that's what really gives it its sort of variety and its strategy, really, that you can pick your way through uh, the game. On this uh, this game, Beneath the Aressa, it's kind of linear. You just proceed along each one of these events or nodes on the on the path there there is a one branching path if we come down to the bottom here you can see here after this event you've got kind of this branching path and that's the only real choice you've got in this floor one uh, run so pretty disappointing that i like really like in slay the spire where you get to to choose your path through the level and sort of pick your way through uh, but not here. So anyway, this is your map. So you can see here different sort of events. You've got a regular event, scavenge, uh, regroup. These all do different things. Elite fight there. Most of these will involve a combat encounter. Um, so we'll see that as we go along. We'll do a couple of these and you should then get a, a flavor enough of what's going on. So the first fight here, the first node on the map. So if we look here, the one that's in orange, regular fight. You get two options here, so you choose a strategy, so you can start with the high ground, and it says there this combat gains you one action point and one card on the first round. And again, sorry to labour this point, but you know none of these symbols are really explained, you kind of have to pick up what, what they're denoting as you go along, but the little blue circles are action points, again if you're used to Slay the Spy you'll know what they are, and the little squares are cards, so choice there, this combat gain one action point and a card on the first round. Or you can heal five health P HP. Uh, obviously, this is our first fight. We don't need to do that. So we'll take the extra action point and the card. And then we're into the fight. So after all that, here's the first fight. So very different to Slay the Spire in terms of graphics. I'm sure you, you would have seen if you're interested in this game at all. But it's kind of 3D. Got this lovely kind of... I don't know what graphic style you say. It's not really shell, shade, shell cell shaded. But it's kind of this animated with the thick black outlines i think it looks really cool and it's a graphical style that's you know suits the switch you can flick between the enemies here with the left and right bumpers and another thing that's different to slay the spire are these sort of action zones or these fight zones so you've got two zones one is nearby so you can see there's always kind of a, a some sort of dividing line on a level whether it's like a stream or you know a rocky crop or here there's sort of a little i don't know what that is sort of a pathway but it splits the battlefield into two. So you've got this enemy here who will be classed in the near battlefield. And then those two enemies in the distance will be classed in the far battlefield. And card effects do different things whether enemies are near or far away. Um, so that's a nice little wrinkle. Um, if you go up on the D-pad, you can go up to the enemy uh, sort of uh, actions here and see all of the icons, what they mean. So this near enemy here is planning to do a melee attack a melee attack for six damage and he's also got the ability strength in numbers so each round this foe gains three uh, rage i think that is for each near ally now he's not classed to be near an ally at the moment because he's in the zone on his own so that won't come into effect this far enemy over here it's got protection so he's going to cancel the next attack and any effect targeting them so gives you an idea it's probably not worth attacking them in this round and he's planning to do a melee attack. And he'll also, as you see there, moves into your zone before attacking. So he'll move over to the near zone and do a melee attack on us. And this other enemy here is uh, using a debuff. So he's going to hit, hit me with a negative effect. He's also planning a melee attack for four damage. And he's got something called Spiteful Rending. Um, well, unfortunately, the tooltip's off the screen there. But it says each time you attack this way, they gain three. Three what? I don't know. Um, so you can sort of view the, the enemies and details. These are your cards at the bottom that you start with a basic deck. If we press the minus button, you can see your current deck of cards. So you've got how many is that? 10, 13 cards at the moment. And you can read them, what effects they've got. Uh, typical of these sort of games, top left in the blue, the blue number is the action points. If we go back to the main screen, see on the right uh, left hand side there, We've got the blue circle with how many action points we've got. If you remember this combat, we took an extra action point. So we've got four, usually have three. And uh, next to that is our health bar and our defense. 
again, pretty, pretty standard Slay the Spire kind of setup. And if you look above that, that's our unique ability. So as I say, Sora here has got the Rage Virus ability. So you can see those numbers 0, 5, 10, and 15. Each time you put a Virus card into your deck, that bar grows, and then you see those sort of key points there. So if I get five uh, Virus points, um, various effects happen again on cards. Same for 10 and 15. But as I say, the more of those you put into your deck, the more chance you've got to draw in them and they do various effects. Mostly they take your health if they're still in your hand at the end of the turn. So a bit to go through there. As I say, there isn't a tutorial. So hopefully if you do pick the game up, that quick overview will give you kind of an idea of what's going on. Let's play a couple of rounds and uh, see how this plays. So as we say, we don't want to attack that guy in the distance because he's going to block anything we, we hit. Uh, this guy over here has got 40 health. So my strategy normally for these sort of games is to take out one enemy at a time. So this enemy here is near me. It's got 18 health. I've got plenty of attacking cards. So I'm blocking two damage and I'm going to be hit for at least eight from those two in the distance. So I want to get my block up to eight ideally and also try and take this near guy out so most of my cards are pretty basic i've got a uh, savage strike which will do 10 damage uh, cursed vigor here will give me eight defense I've got a couple of those another savage strike for 10 damage another savage strike and then an onslaught which will do eight damage but also draw me a virus card so it will start filling up my virus bar but also put a virus card in my deck um, and this has got an ability called Fading, so it says this card is erased for this combat when played. So I won't be able to use this card again, but it doesn't cost me anything to use it. So I think I'm going to start with that, as it doesn't cost me anything to use it, I'm going to use that on this enemy here. And you can see this nice animation there, when you get used to the game, you see it kind of slowed down there, like a slow down effect. Now if you queue up a few different cards, your character will kind of do a combo attack that looks really cool. So, um, but we'll take it kind of slow for the first um, few combats. So I've got them down to eight. If I do another strike, that will take them out. 10 damage there, kill the enemy. So I've got three action points left. So I've got plenty of points left. So I want to get my shield up to eight still. So I'm going to use maybe this Cursed Vigor card to give me eight shield. We'll come back to that kill them all in a sec. So let's do that. Let's get our... Hmm, do we want to use this one actually? Kill them all. So kill them all. We'll add another virus, virus card to this card pile. I'll gain one Onslaught, which you can see there is a uh, new card. So that's quite cool. And it also gives me 10 defense, which will be enough to block their two attacks. So I'm going to use that card actually. So if you see there on, my, on the left-hand side, the virus bar is now starting to fill up. I've got one... Uh, virus and if we look at the discard pile you can see there's a virus card in there now so we look at that with uh, zr and then zl is your draw pile so this is the cards that i've got left to draw again pretty standard stuff if you played these games so i've got two action points left i could probably i've got enough defense i just want to do enough damage to oh no i don't want to attack him do i because uh that this guy here is, is going to block anything that I do to him. So let's try and whittle down this uh, enemy here with a 40 health in the top right. So let's just do... Let's do an onslaught on him. And a savage strike. And another savage strike. So you can see that it kind of uh, get a nice combo animation going. The, the slowdown effect isn't like the... Isn't, sort of a technical slowdown in the game. It's just a nice slow motion effect. So uh, there's no sort of technical problem. So that's all my action points used up. You can see my cards have grayed out. I've got zero three points on the left hand side. Uh, so I press X to end my turn and then the enemy gets to do their predicted moves. So I was actually attacked for seven damage in the end, uh, which did seem to come off of my health, which is quite odd because I thought I defended that, but there you go. Um, so, back to me. So, it's my hand of combat. So, cards we've got now, we've got this Curse Vigor. So, gain 8 shield, gain 8 shield. Savage Strike for 10 attack. Uh, Gory Rampage. If the target is far, gain 2 uh, Fury, which increases the attack damage I can do. 
and adds one virus to the draw pile. Now, these enemies aren't classed as far because I've moved into their zone now. These are classed as near. Um, I can't really see. Oh, you can see there that past that path, they'd be classed as far enemies. Um, also on this card, when you play a surge card, uh, when you play a surge, draw this card. So a surge is a kind of type of card, uh, which we haven't seen yet. Uh, this card is a new one, Blazing Shift. So deal eight damage to each foe and gain eight shield. I'm not quite sure what on transform repeat this effect means, but there you go. Um, so that would be quite useful. Although this enemy is now using protection, so he'll block any attacks that I make. This enemy's only got 12 health left. So we're gonna use this, we will use that blazing shift and deal eight damage to both. And then we should be able to finish both of these off. So yeah, let's do that. Oh, he's blocked that. Okay, so. Right, we'll just get rid of him and then that's us, that's us out of points. So we're gonna take some damage from the other enemy. Blocked most of that with our shield and then with Savage Strike, we'll be able to finish him off. So that's that combat finished with. Get to pick a, a card is the sort of reward. So uh, each of these cards also has an upgrade path. So if you hold down a uh, wire, you can see Different upgrades there. The UI is not great for this. Looks a bit messy, but um, there you go. We've also got this kind of tool tip that pops up that you can't really seem to get rid of. So it kind of sits over other cards, makes it a bit difficult to see them. Obviously, if you're playing this on PC with a mouse, it'd be much nicer because you just sort of hover over, but there you go. Um, so these are the three cards. We've got Balfour Cycle, um, Scaled Vigor, and Explosive Spring. So this card's quite good, this Scaled Vigor, so it gives us 10 shield. And then arrays up to two random virus cards in each hand. For each arrays, gain four shields. So that's a really nice card. So if you've got those later game virus cards in your hand that will do your damage, you can play this card, it'll get rid of two of them. And if you know for each one it gets rid of, it also gives you four shield on top of the 10 shield it already gives you. So one thing I do like about this game is the cards are really quite dynamic. Um, so they, they, right from the start, the early cards do a lot of really cool stuff. Um, b -b 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 what, what, I might take that actually. It's quite a nice card. So we'll take that card, Scaled Vigor. And then we'll move on to the next node on the map. So you can see there the line following on to the next node. This one is a, a scavenge event. So we've got here, we can uh, get some rewards. So that again, there's a choice. So you can add uh, this first choice here at the top. So add one stun to your deck, uh, gain Antiquarium, which is another kind of resource that you can use to upgrade some passives. And what's that say? Gain three exceptional cards. So that's cool. Uh, second benefit here is gain, uh, choose one of five exceptional cards. So I guess this top one will give you three cards uh, but it looks like there's much other benefits here, uh, much more benefit here. So let's try that. So we're going to take that. So add in one stun, uh, learn new techniques fleeting. This card is erased when played, discarded, or if still in your hand at the end of a turn. Okay. Uh, we've got this antiquarium. So this is like a passive. Uh, these are really cool. So this one's called protective glyph. And it says when you draw a surge card, uh, when you play a surge ability, I think that is, draw one virus. Mm. Debatable how much help that is. And then gain three exceptional cards here. As I say, I think they're just gonna give you three cards rather than let you pick them. So, fair enough, they look quite cool. Obviously, if you've played deck building games before, you'll know the kind of ultimate goal in building your deck is getting rid of cards. So to just be given three cards that you might not want or might not synergize with your deck isn't always great, but early game, it's fine. We'll start thinning that deck out. Uh, so next combat here, we'll do one more. So uh, choice here, we can draw an extra card on the first round. We can heal five health points. Uh, I think healing is quite good as well. Keep your health up, so we'll take the healing option. 
gain five HP. Uh, three enemies to fight here. So again, we've got one near, two classed as far. What abilities are they doing? So this one here is going to do five melee damage. Uh, this one's got six uh, gun damage. I don't know what you'd call it. What, what do they call it? Ranged attack. So it's going to range attack for five. And then this other enemy is going to buff himself or an ally. So he's not really going to attack. So looking at covering off 11 damage possibly. Five melee damage from this vicious bruiser. And six range damage from this vicious bruiser. So as long as we can get either kill one of these or get 11 shield then we'll be covered. Uh, a quick look at the cards we've got. This one again is quite nice. Deal 8 damage to each foe. I quite like that. Take that for one point. Um, we can get rid of this near enemy. He's only got 8 health left. So we'll play, actually, we'll play this onslaught card. It's 0. And it will get rid of him. Uh, and this dude at the back's only got 10. So we can get rid of him as well. And we've got 10 shields, so we're covered off on the damage from that guy. I don't know if he can actually get us. If we do this melee and we move into the far zone, I don't know if this guy will still be able to do ranged damage to us. Let's have a look. Oh, it just means he stays in his own zone when attacking, so that's fine. Uh, he will also He's also got an ability of evasion, so he flees to far before attacking so he'll move to a, the opposite zone you're in and then attack you so that's fine but I think that was a good round we've still got a point left to spend we don't need any more defense I've got three defensive cards I think I'll take this kill them all to gain a virus card and then we've got this onslaught card added to our deck for zero draw us another virus but it allows us to do eight damage so as you see the, the turns get quite uh quite dynamic as i say so it's really cool so he goes off to the far zone does his ranged attack doesn't hit us because we've got shields up he's only got six health left so we can just basically finish him off pretty quickly with the savage strike card get an easy victory pick up a new card now this is another difference in slay the spire actually is that you have to pick a new card uh, I think in Slay the Spy you can skip picking up a new card. And as I said earlier, deck builders are all about thinning your deck out and getting an optimal, um, well synergized deck. So here you have to take a card, but you do get chances to thin your deck out at various events. Um, bum, 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 bum. This one's quite nice. Bloody Anticipation gives us increased attack damage for zero points. I think we'll take that. Always handy. And then you move on to the next zone. So just some final thoughts on this. Uh, I think you get the idea of how the combat works and how the game works generally. So you get to the end of the floor, you'll fight a boss. Uh, da -da 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 -da. If you come down here. So you got fight the champion at the end of the run. And then if you win that, move on to the next floor. Beat three floors, you're beating the game. And you sort of unlock a, a kind of a, a new game plus type thing. So you can run through again unlocking XP and sort of getting new expeditions and new characters unlocked, new companions unlocked. So there is incentive to keep playing through it, um, which is cool. Um, but yeah, I really like it. I like it a lot. As I say, when I first played it, I was absolutely all over the place because it just doesn't explain anything to you at all very well. And it was really quite annoying. Uh, and I was wondering actually if I was missing something, but I wasn't. It's just the game wants you to learn things yourself which is fine. But now I've got the hang of it. Hopefully what I've been able to explain in this video will help you guys out. Uh, drop me a comment below if you like deck builders. I've covered, I think, Slay the Spire, Monster Train, and probably other deck builders on the channel before. So there are quite a favorite genre of mine. But let me know what you think of deck builders and this game generally, and if you're gonna be picking this one up. There's a little tip actually, so don't go just yet. Uh, this is uh, 20 pounds I think in the UK 18 dollars in the US but if you pick it up from South Africa then it's actually less than half price um, you pay 
the UK equivalent of £10 for this. So have a look around at how to switch your stores. It's really easy to do. Um, no problems doing it. Uh, I've got videos on that, so maybe have a look at those. Um, but yeah, check that out. Get it from South Africa. It's half price. And uh, happy days. So that's it. That's Beneath Aressa. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, stay tuned for more videos. Drop me a like and a subscribe below if you can. That'd be great. And I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching. See you later.